So can you put up the presentation, please? So I can so I can read it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about the real truth about seed oils. And the reason why I'm doing that is I've been working in the arena of seed oils since 1980 when I got poisoned by pesticides. And I looked very deeply into it because there were so many contradictions in the arena. Like, for instance, the biggest one for me was I read a study that said omega-6 is an essential nutrient that you can't make but have to have in order to live and be healthy. And then the next study I read, it says omega-6 gives you cancer and kills you. And on my head, my head just exploded. It's like, okay, you have something that you have to have for health, and then it gives you cancer and kills you. There's got to be something else going on here. And because of that contradiction, it forced me to look deeper. What else is going on? And it turned out that what most of what we blame on seed oils or industrial oils or omega-6s should be blamed on the damage done to these oils by industries processing, and we'll get into the details of that, and by how we use them in food preparation, especially how we damage them when we fry them. And so I realized that I couldn't get healthy on damaged oils. So I decided we should make oils with health in mind and that requires giving them protection because they're very, very sensitive molecules. And so I developed a method for making oils with health in mind where light, oxygen, and heat, the most destructive influences, do not get to the oil. From the time it's in the seed, where nature's packaging protects it quite well, actually, through the pressing, the filtering, the settling, the filling, the bottling, like that's the filling, and until it's in a brown glass bottle, nitrogen flushed with a box around the bottle so no light gets through, in the fridge, in the factory or the store or the home. And so I built this very, has to, you have to build a very tight system. So we built that system and out of that came flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil is very rich in omega-3, which is the single most widespread essential nutrient deficiency of our time. And, but it's poorly balanced. Omega-3 and 6 need to be balanced. I became omega-6 deficient on flaxseed oil and then developed a blend where omega-3 and 6, both made with health in mind, are properly balanced for the best energy effects of this unbelievably good source of essential fatty acids and energy and all kinds of other hormonal and regulatory functions in the body, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory functions in the body. So anyway, I, I, I've just kind of given you an overview of it. And because there are now a lot of books that are saying don't do oils and don't do seed oils and don't do omega-6s because they haven't done their homework, they have not looked deep enough to understand that what they're blaming on these oils and the omega-6s should be blamed on the damage done by how we treat them. And if we treat them better, if we treat them the way they need to be treated, if we protect them, then they have enormous benefits for the body. But when we damage them, they can do enormous damage to the body. So my slogan is that more health problems come from damaged oils than any other part of nutrition, and more health benefits come from making the oil change that your body needs from the damaged oils to oils made with health in mind. And, uh, and I've been working in the, with oils now for 40 years. I've seen everything. I've heard all the stories. And so hopefully the devil is always in the details. So we're going to look at some of the details. So please uh, take the next. Okay, here we go. So public education. So that's what I've said. And there's every, all the time, there's people writing books about the dangers of seed oils. Right now, it's really hot again. Uh, a bunch of people going around. They demonize the omega-6, even though omega-6 is an essential nutrient that you can't make but have to have. 
and every cell needs. They demonize omega-6s rather than the damage done to them. They demonize seed oils rather than the damage done to them. They recommend not using industrial oils, which is not a bad idea. They recommend not using omega-6s, which is a bad idea because if you got no omega-6s in your diet, you would eventually die from lack of omega-6s in your body. And then they recommend not using oils at all and you will usually find that if you don't use any oils your skin will get dry and your energy levels will go down and we we know this from experience over the years and like i said they haven't done their homework they haven't deep looked deeply enough into the topic and they make the assumption that nature's mandate is optimum health therefore you should only eat whole foods i can argue that uh concept because i've also tried that out on myself and i find that if i high grade some of the principles from nature i actually get better health than if i just eat whole foods and that's not always true and and what i high grade has to be high graded with enormous amount of uh, uh quality and thoughtfulness put into it then it works Accurate, inaccurate books. Yeah, we love freedom of speech. The upside is we get to say what we want. And the downside is we want we get to say what we want, even if it's not true. And the problem with the free speech, I love free speech, but there has to be accountability and, you know, self-accountability at least, so that we don't just say, oh, yeah, I know. I know when you don't know that you actually go down into the details and dig out. The, the source of it. And in order to, to do that, you have to be in a calm place and not full of beliefs and preconceived ideas and agendas that you want to push. So I've been doing this for, like I said, 40 years. And there's so many books, even some of the speakers at this conference, they recommend against using oils. And, uh, you know, I would match them from a health perspective. I am today, I turned 81. I think at 4.30 in the morning, uh, I turned 81. And uh, uh, pretty much I do, I take oils every day, the, the ones made with health in mind. And uh, I pay attention. I eat mostly plant-based, mostly whole foods, uh, a lot of it raw. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is the research is either misunderstood uh, it, it, there's, re, there's, there's research now that says that 50% of what is published in the medical journals is actually wrong. And there are lots of reasons why uh, people uh, should not make the warranted assumption that everything they read in research study reports is correct. And there's lots of reasons why. Um, the... the uh, the scientists don't always tell the truth. They are corruptible like everybody else. And you give them this, this, uh, certain kinds of threats or certain kinds of rewards, promise them certain kinds of rewards. There are scientists that will twist their information to prove what the payer wants them to prove. And that's a, we, we know that's true in a lot of industries. It's definitely in, true in the oil industry. I've been following it for years. And... Uh, one of the things is, uh, and I'll tell you a story, uh, the damage done to oils by industrial processing has never made the mainstream news. We got close. I was in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, and got an interview with uh, CTV, which is the, one of the national television networks in Canada. And we had a beautiful interview, and I talked about the damage done to oils and and uh, they loved the interview. They said, we're going to play it on the news tonight. I had the evening off, so I thought I'd watch myself on television because I usually don't see it. And sometimes you look, see yourself on television. You say, oh, I, I, I squish my nose or I squint my eyes or, you know, you can improve your, your, your presentation. So I thought I'd watch myself. I watched the evening news. They never played the interview. But what they did play was an ad for Wesson Oils. Well, Wesson Oils <laughs> happens just to be one of the mainstream oil producers that 
uh, damage to the oil while they're being produced. And the television station was getting revenue from the ads from that company. So they decided not to play the interview. That's, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's, that's not an unusual situation. Uh, we also, the, um, the conversion studies have been done wrong now for about 20 years. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and, uh, and then the, the people conflate what is food oil foundation and what is oil supplement. The two are completely different. And you cannot take a supplement to fix a damaged food oil foundation. You actually have to fix the foundation. The foundation is, is seeds, nuts, whole foods, and oils derived from them. That's the foundation. When the oils are damaged, then you are, are getting a damaged foundation, and then that will damage your health. And the foundation is about two to four tablespoons for most people, which is one to two ounces, which is 25 to 56 grams, which is between 250 and 500 calories, which is about 12 to 25% of your daily calories. And uh, the ratio between the two is, needs to be uh, paid attention to, because if you get too much of one, it crowds out the other. And if you get too much of the other, it crowds out the one. So we work with the ratio of two to one. That's where we've always in practice seen the best results, although some of the theoreticians disagree with us. And I can't see the rest of my sheet here. Um, supplements is one to two uh, is, uh, yeah, supplements are one to two, one to three grams. And less than 10% of the population takes fish oil supplements. Last I looked, it was 7.8%. Uh, that was a figure from 2015. Next slide, please. So I say the devil is in the details. The devil is always in the details. You can say, a, you can tell a nice story, but when you look at the details, it's kind of like numbers don't lie. You need to look at the numbers. You need to look at the definitions. So that's the homework that a, an author ought to take on by their own self responsibility before they put out information in public that might end up miseducate them. And so I've already talked about some of this. The imbalance between omega-3 is a problem. Uh, we have doubled our omega-6 intake in the past 100 years, and our omega-3s are down to one-sixth of levels of 100 years ago. So the ratio between them, the balance between them is way off. That's a problem. Lack of other essential nutrients is a huge issue because essential fatty acids don't work in the body in isolation. And we'll get into a list of all of those, those things that affect how they work, how they're converted into other molecules, and, and what happens uh, when we don't get those essential nutrients that they require. <music>